Hello there, and welcome once again back to Joe the Shirt's Off the Cuff. Uh, as always, I am Joe the Shirt, and uh, this is Off the Cuff. Uh, welcome to our, uh, my first show since uh, last year, which of course would be uh, just uh, Christmas Eve is when I put that one out. Uh, you can still check out the video if you like, uh, or I'll put it up again if you would like me to do that. Uh, this is my first show here in 2012. Uh, I'm liking it so far. No, no issues there. Hope you guys are doing well. Ugh, let's find out what's going on in the world today. Uh, I am not a politically astute guy. I'm really not. I'm not that bright. I don't keep up on what's going on. I don't know who Romney is. I don't know who Bachman is. I... I, I really don't. I know who Obama is, and that's important, but I will be looking into it a little bit more, okay? So I really should know who the hell it is I'm voting for. <laughs> Personally, I think it's amazing they let me vote. But let's start with a little, little news here. Okay, here's something, here's something that's going on here. Uh, some of you may or may not have heard of this. Um, the French are at it again. This is crazy. Uh, the French <laughs> have decided to make it harder for uh, people to become French citizens. Of course, that begs the question, who would want to? Well, you know, besides Johnny Depp, all right? Um, apparently, uh, France, let's see, has made it harder for foreigners to obtain French citizenship by forcing them to take tough new language tests and swear allegiance to French values. Uh, now, by the tough new language tests... Uh, they expect French, uh, the people coming into the country, into France, to be able to understand French on at least a 15-year-old boy's level. I don't know why they specified 15-year-old boy. You know, why not 15-year-old girl? Most likely because girls tend to do better in a lot in language than boys do, and of course, and that which would be unfair. Not that this isn't unfair. Hell, just get into this country. You really don't have to know English on a 15 year old level fuck you don't need to know English <laughs> but uh, this has made a lot of people really really pissed off um, because, let's see uh, let's see here according to, to the France the motto of France is uh, liberty equality fraternity unless <laughs> unless um, unless of course you happen to be a Muslim at least that's what about a hundred thousand Muslims which account for about a good half of the applicants for French citizenship are is Muslim. Uh, they say it's completely unfair, as is especially uh, that you that uh, not only are they to integ integrate through language, they must also adhere to principles, values, and symbols of French democracy. Um, what does that mean? What does that mean? That means is that a traditional Muslim Islamic uh, families, uh, the man is pretty much the be-all, end-all. Uh, women have little to no rights in a lot of Muslim countries, and uh, a lot of these people bring over these uh, these what, these belief systems, these, these moral values uh, with them. Thus, they are forced to, even if they live here in uh, the United States or in France or Italy or wherever, they got to wear the whole outfits, the burqas, they're not allowed to be out in public. Uh, unescorted by a male. As a matter of fact here, uh, let's see, let's see, Guillaume, I think that's the guy's name, uh, <laughs> some sort of, Claude Guillaume, France's conservative interior minister, uh, went out of his way to stop one specific guy from coming into the country, uh, an Algerian-born man living in France from obtaining French nationality because of, quote, his degrading attitudes towards women. The man admitted uh, that he did not allow his French wife to leave the couple's home freely. So, uh, in this guy's eyes, uh, this man was basically keeping his French-born citizen uh, hostage in her own country. Um, okay. My... It's a tough one. I, I, think, I, I really think it is because... On the one hand, we like to think that you know everybody should have freedom of all things, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, especially here. We talk about it all the time. Well, that's why I'm able to do this show with you guys. But um, 
certain freedoms come with a lot of restrictions. Uh, for instance, you know, uh, a lot of the Muslim faith, you know, they tell, you know, their women that they can't do this, they can't do that, they can't do this. But, and that's within the religion, yet within the country they live in, they do have these rights. Um, and I don't think it would even be fair to, to say that, uh, well, maybe these women do it uh, voluntarily. Well, you know what? When you're brought up in a certain culture and you're brought up to believe certain things, it is really difficult to get your mindset out of there because no one's ever introduced to you these new ideas or told you that it's okay without being shunned by the very society that you're trying to be in. I mean, if a Muslim woman decides, you know, in uh, France that she doesn't want to wear a burqa and she's going to go out without her husband's approval whenever she likes, she has legal recourse, okay? She doesn't have to take his shit. But, you know, then uh, the Muslim life that she may love very much, the Muslim faith that she loves very much, she would be shunned from by, you know, just about everybody she grew up with. Uh, which would be a lot easier than, say, in some Arab countries where she'd just be beaten to death or stoned to death or what have you. Speaking of uh, punishing Muslim women, uh, there was a woman in uh, the news recently uh, in Iran who had been sentenced to death for, uh, I believe, cheating on her spouse. Um, she is already in jail for uh, some other crime, but they're, now they're looking to execute her but uh, instead of the normal stoning, they've, they're thinking, they're considering being as merciful as hanging. Way to go, Iran. Leading, leading the way. Other somewhat international news. You guys may have heard about this. Uh, they found the body in the Queen of England's estate. Uh, let's see, what, what happened to you? On the corner of Queen Elizabeth II's Sandringham country estate, where the royal family traditionally spends the Christmas and New Year's holiday, it be became a homicide crime scene on Tuesday. Uh, Norfolk County Police and nearby Kings Lynn, about 100 miles east of London, launched a murder inquiry after the discovery of the body of a woman in the woods close to Anmer, a village on the 20,000 acre area in farmland woods owned by the royal family. Uh, the body was found in a 600 acre patch that is uh, open to the public. And uh, they, there are no details as to how the body uh, was found, what condition it was found, whether it was naked, whether it, uh, if it could see what killed her. Uh, they are believing that it is a homicide and uh, that the body had been laying there for anywhere between one and four months. Nobody saw a thing <laughs> in one to four months. But then again, 600 acres is a lot of space. And this is the woods. Uh, the body wasn't buried, but you know, if it snowed, a lot of foliage, some leaves, it's very easy, you know, for the body to not be found. But it was by a dog walker. In my opinion, I think the queen did it. Just, just saying, just saying. I think maybe she caught uh, Prince Philip, you know, iron some bitch and shatter, whacked. Just saying. And now for a little crime closer to home, actually. Uh, suspect in an uh, airport, uh, a military dem demolitions expert who completed three tours of duty in Afghanistan, is being held on Tuesday for on federal charges uh, that, of that he tried to transport C-4 <laughs> on board a civilian airplane in Texas. Um... Uh, his name, uh, let's see, Sergeant Trey Atwater, uh, told investigators, I love this, that he was surprised to see the explosives, which were in a carry-on bag, he said he brought back from Afghanistan in April. He said he had not since used the bag, which was in his garage, until he grabbed it to carry children's items to Texas for a visit to relatives. Okay, I'm going to call bullshit right here. <laughs> <laughs> the military demolitions expert had no idea there were chunks of C4 in his bag. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what his intent, were, intent was, but I will say this much. Anytime I've gone on a trip, 
and I grab a bag from the closet or the garage, the first thing I do is open it up and look and see if there's anything left inside it. He just, hey, is, is that C4? No, 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 that's not mine, officer. That's not. Uh, let's see here, what have I got? I want to go through a few of these because I did that one. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, more, a little, little late on this, but holiday crime. Uh, there was a gentleman, you may have heard of him, who had been starting fires right here in my lovely home of West Hollywood. Um, apparently he was pissed off at the U.S. government and their immigration laws and decided to torch something around 50, 52 cars... Uh, and they suspect possibly a house. Um, okay, I gotta tell you, if you're pissed off with the way immigration works in this country, I don't think starting a crime wave is the way to convince them that you're a good guy after all, and you can stay. Uh, guy's a German. I wish I could find the article itself so I can uh, at least tell you his name, but... What's really fun is I was actually a uh, witness to one of one of his deals, man. Um, was it uh, uh, New Year's Eve? I was out walking the dog, and I'm going right up here on Santa Monica Boulevard. Right, I'm walking by Hamburger Mary's, and I see this gigantic plume of smoke coming from a car uh, right right there on the side street. And I ask, "What the hell's going on?" And obviously, some guy goes, "Well, somebody." Burns, burned a car. And I'm like, again? He's like, yeah. I'm like, hey. So, laws. Got laws here in uh, West Hollywood. A lot more than I thought are necessary, but one that uh, surprisingly bothers me. A lot of people don't understand why. Just passed a new law that uh, not only can you not smoke in bars and restaurants, uh, you can't smoke in a bar, restaurant, patio area. But now, of course, you can't even smoke within five feet of a patio area. So, you know, basically, you know, here's the patio, here's you, you can't smoke. Can't do that. Um, personally, okay, I get the whole no smoking in the restaurant, fine. But I think in an outdoor area, and especially in a fucking bar, smoke all you want. Remember, boys, if she smokes, she pokes. Um, they made a big deal out of this. They, you know, they're doing it, you know, for the betterment of uh, everybody around. Um, many uh, opponents to the ban say that, uh, say that, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, many proponents of the ban said that a lot of people were worried that it was going to slow down business because, you know, people couldn't smoke in their favorite bar or their favorite uh, you know, restaurant patio, and according to them, allegedly, business has actually increased because, here's a quote for you, uh, he said that smokers are accustomed to restrictions. People will continue to eat out and continue to go out. Um, so because somebody is used to getting less than equal treatment, we should just continue making it worse for them. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah, let's 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 go with that. Yeah. No civil rights there. <laughs> uh my god, did that story already. Uh here we go. I don't know if you guys have heard of, of the new TV show Work It aired uh, this past Tuesday. It's about two guys who dress up like women, make believe that they're women so that they can go to work. That sounds slightly like the whole premise of Bosom Buddies. Okay, fine. I don't mind people stealing. Go ahead. But there's a there's a little little riff here. Uh, according to this, ABC's new sitcom Work It, which premiered on Tuesday, focuses on two men who dress at, as women in order to get jobs in a female-only sales company because their skills as men are not considered marketable, deemed a man session on the show's website. Um, okay, first of all, on what 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 country is there that that you can have a female only sales company? 
I mean, that's a little far-fetched as far as I can tell. I mean, that's like, that's kind of reaching. Um, but that's not the complaint here. The complaint uh, comes from this. Promotions for the show depict the lead characters in various uh, comedic situations, including using um, the men's bathroom while dressed as women, reacting to colleagues who comment on their size, and complaining about having to hide their voices and genitals at work. Okay, this has put the panties into the bunches of uh, gay, gay men, lesbians, and transgender people about the show, saying that the network has taken a big step back by making punchlines out of the very real challenges transgender people face in the workplace. Challenges that contribute to an unemployment rate among transgender people that is double what it is for the general public. That's according to Transgender Economic Empowerment Program, otherwise known as TEEP. The uh, program manager, uh, Drian Juarez, doesn't uh, mention here whether or not Drian is a transgender, but he's got a few things to say. He says here that Gay and Lesbian Center combats um, discrimination in the workplace and helps transgender people find employment. Uh, according to Juarez, the show exploits common issues that transgender people face daily. Isn't that what sitcoms do? make fun of the problems that people encounter daily i mean that's the situation comedy the situation is two guys have to dress up as women so they can go work in this sexist workplace where they're not allowed because they're men but now in this, and the comedy comes from the fact that hey they're not really transgenders they're just a couple of guys making believe that they are um while the, according to this, while the characters on the show are not actually transgenders, they, put, they are put in similar situations as those who are dealing with workplace discrimination and offensive comments. Uh, what is clearly intended to be a humorous promotional ad for the show depicts the two lead characters dressed as women standing at a urinal. Um, they, let's see, uh, according to him, it's uh, very common for people to promote fear or sharing the bathroom with transgender people as they seem as sexual predators looking to have sex in bathrooms. Well, um, I'm going to comment about the whole bathroom thing. What I really want to talk about here is it's, he says it's intended to be humorous. He admits that's the intention. Um, he's making fun of that. Uh, just like uh, back in the good old days of great shows like uh, uh, Good Times situation there was you know that we're, we're talking about very black very black people very poor black people very poor black people trying to make it in a world that is unfair to them they made fun of that and it's one of my all-time favorite shows you know um uh, as was uh let's see uh let's see with good times sanford and son the jeffersons these were all great shows that were based on real life tragedy of being, you know, a black person in this country that was not being given uh, all the opportunities that somebody that was white was getting. And then them dealing with it, be it with comedy and most of the time with a lot of heart. Now, I'm not saying that this show is going to be that, you know, high of a concept. Um, that it's going to be that deep. I mean, it could be if they want to take it that way. Or maybe they just want to take it the Bosom Buddies way. Which was really not so much about, you know, they wearing dresses. The whole wearing dresses was just a vehicle, you know, to get them into the situations. But at no point um, while watching that show did I ever believe that uh, Buffy and Hildegard... <laughs> were being discriminated against or being thought of as being less of a human being. As a matter of fact, much like this show, they weren't pretending to be transgenders. They're pretending to be women. And as and I haven't seen the show yet, so I can't judge here. But one thing that was always uh, true about Bosom Buddies is, in Bosom Buddies, people accepted that they were women. Okay? And let's be honest here. Uh, men wearing dresses in this country has been a staple of American comedy for longer than I can remember. I'm talking like Milton Berle, okay? I'm talking about uh, Bugs Bunny, you know, Bosom Buddies, uh, Three's Company. I mean, this is a staple in this country. 
for American comedy. Um, you know what? Here's here's one of the jokes that uh, was featured on this show here. Um, it's a, a promo in which one of the lead male characters, which is dressed as a woman, talks to a co-worker who notices a tan line on his ring finger. The co-worker then asks, Did he leave you for somebody smaller? So... I, and especially out here in West Hollywood, there's a lot of transgenders. And I'm talking... I'm not talking like, you know, little dudes that are like five foot three and, you know, have like hips smaller than my sister. No, no. We're talking about six foot four dudes in big ass pumps, you know, but with long flowing hair and full makeup and the big fake tits popped out to there. And my question is really, uh, this gay and lesbian alliance here and teep here, did they really, do they really know for a fact? that all transgenders are pissed off by this? Maybe some are, I believe that. But is it enough to make that big a deal out of it? I mean, I'm, I'm, am I gonna ask, uh, is, are, are there gonna be uh, black protesters protesting shows like Good Times, saying that it's an unfair representation of, of black America? Well, at the time, it wasn't that unfair. This is actually, unfortunately, really quite true. But it made for good TV, and I think that this show you know, I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to give this a chance. And if it's not funny, I'm not going to watch it. If it's offensive, I'm still going to watch it if it's still funny. It's a situation comedy. You can't take it seriously. I know, I got a little too heavy on that, right? I don't want to talk about France or the, the economy or uh, the presidential race. I talk about something that I know. I'm comfortable with this. Uh, uh, actually, we have, do have other laws here. And... California that were passed Thought I'd go through some of the ones I thought were more interesting. Maybe you will too um, The the new baby food law banned stores from selling expired infant food and formula. I I didn't know that they were allowed to ex sell expired food and formula. So what we're saying is that up until now it was okay. Oh, yeah, this has gone bad. Here you go. I'll be $13.95 Uh-huh beer the new beer law bars the importation, production, and sale of beer to which caffeine has been directly added as a separate ingredient in response to incidents in which young people have been hospitalized with severe intoxications after drinking the beverages. Uh, basically, people were drinking and not falling asleep, so they just kept on drinking <laughs> and ended up in the hospital. Fuck them. I, I, <laughs> I don't care. Uh, cyberbullying allows schools to suspend students for bullying classmates on social networks sites such as Facebook. I'm sorry, I, I've touched on this issue a few times, and no, I'm, cyberbullying. Seriously, You're, if you can really be affected by what somebody said to you, said about you on Facebook, then you know what? Get off Facebook. Seriously, or get a new Facebook name. Don't put up all your information. You know, stop being such a pussy. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay. The drunk driver's uh, law authorizes courts to revoke for up to a decade the driver's license of any person convicted of three of three or more DUIs in a ten-year period. That's in that's that's bad out there for those of you who have those DUIs, because that, that I mean this law is in effect. But uh, my guess is, if you've had two in the last, let's say nine years and eleven months, and you get another one now, even though those two were way back when, you can go to jail. I don't I, I don't know if it's retroactive or not. It could be that it starts from now, but I doubt that. Uh, another related law. Uh, bans police agencies that set up drunk driving checkpoints from impounding cars some from sober but unlicensed drivers if there is a legal driver available to take the wheel. So, so basically, you know, I'm driving the car, you're sitting next to me, I'm, de I'm drop dead sober, but I'm not legal to drink, I mean to drive uh, in this state, in this country, so they stop me, they can't impound my car, I can just go, well... Right Ty's going to drive it. Interesting. Uh, hmm. 
This one I find is going to be a tough to enforce, I think. Human trafficking Re requires large retailers and manufacturers to publicly report what steps they take to make sure that those providing their supplies and products are not engaging in slavery and human trafficking. Exactly how is Sears going to do that? Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little confused on that one. How is Macy's going to do that? What, what steps do they have to take to convince anybody... Oh, yeah, we got uh, these clothes. They weren't made by slaves. No, 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 no. Uh, <clears throat> uh, infused drinks. This new law allows bars to infuse alcohol with fruits and vegetables for use in cocktails. Now, I've worked as a bartender in this town for six years, and I can already tell you, we already did it. <laughs> uh... This, I think, is a good law. Uh, job applicants. Bars employers from using credit reports and deciding whether to hire somebody. I want to know why they were using that in the first place, actually. I, I mean, what, what, what's one thing I to do with the other? It's like, yeah, I owed money. That's why I'm getting this job. <laughs> uh, this, this one's celebrity related. You, you've probably heard of it. Uh, lap bands require periodic inspections of outpatient surgery centers that perform lap band operations and other procedures. The law is a response to the 2007 death of singer Kanye West's mother after liposuction and breast augmentation surgery at a Westside clinic. Now well, there you go. I don't know what that has exactly to do with lap band, but there you go. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm going to do a few more of these. Uh, marijuana, always one of my faves. Uh, gives cities and counties clear authority to regulate the location and operation of medical marijuana dispensaries. Okay. Another law creates new penalties for the possession of synthetic cannabis products which have been sold in convenience stores and tobacco shops. So, real pot is getting more and more legal and they're regulating its distribution. Fake pot, synthetic pot, that's illegal now. Okay, I'm good with that. Uh, this is this. I'm surprised this one passed actually. Uh, medical consent gives children 12 and older, as young as 12 now, the authority to get medical care for the prevention of sexually transmitted diseases, including the HP vaccine, without parental consent. So, you can be 12. You want to get laid, but you don't want to get sick. You don't have to tell mom and dad anything. Fuck. I'm really surprised that one got passed. Uh, let's see. You want that one? Okay, we, here you go. Let's see. Prostitution. Another one of my faves. Uh, imposes a special court fine of $25,000 on defendants convicted of prostitution involving a minor. So besides going to jail and whatever other fines you might get, there was a minor involved, twenty-five grand. Oh, well. I'm sure he won't be able to make that up in a week or two. And f what else here? Uh, there's a couple more. Puppies. The Puppies Law. Outlaws the selling of live animals on any street, sidewalk, parking lot, or public right-of-way. Didn't realize this had become a problem anywhere. I mean, I know places like San Francisco already uh, banned them from being sold in pet stores. And I actually think it's happening here in Los Angeles because uh, there was a was it a Petco, uh, just about a mile away from where I live, and as long as that Petco had been there, I would go by there and I would see, you know, the birds and the hamsters and the spiders and the fish, the goldfish and all, and all the angelfish and all that. And I just as a recently, as a couple of months ago, I was by there and uh, not a single animal in the place other than feeder fish. Um, pet stores can't sell pets. Uh. Restaurants may use up their supplies of shark fins, a delicacy in Chinese cooking, purchased before January 1st. After that, sale and possession of shark fin will be illegal. Aha, take that, you shark fin pushers. And finally, secondly, sexual orientation law encourages state university systems to collect data on students' sexual orientation and encourages the legislation... No, legislative analysts to use it to re recommend improvements in the quality of life for gay, lesbians, bisexuals, and transgender subjects. Students. Uh -huh. uh, 
it sounds like a good idea. I think it's not because I mean, really, what you're really doing is uh, you're, you're 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 encouraging people to find out whether or not you're gay, whether or not you're a lesbian, whether or not you're a transgender, uh, you know, whether or not you're bisexual, you know, and then who's in charge of this information? How do you re how do you regulate exactly where this info goes and for what purpose? I mean, I mean, and there's very, I mean, this is privacy issues. I, I think. I, I mean, there are plenty of people out there. There to this day, even though they live right here in uh, California, which is extremely gay friendly, um, who you know still don't want other people to know that they're gay. Maybe they haven't told their parents. Maybe they haven't told their friends. Maybe they haven't told their wives yet. But you know, whatever reason they have, they don't want other people knowing. But now uh, campuses are being encouraged to find out who these people are. And collect information on them. I think that's a lot scarier than it originally sounded when these people put this idea together. And uh, a very old tradition is back. You do remember hearing about uh, the latest Air Jordans. Um, let's see, what are they called here? The Nike Air Jordans. I'm trying to find out what the exact name of this particular one is. Uh, uh, shoot, 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 shoot. Where is it? Well, you know what? In either case, all you need to know is the tradition of uh, robbing them, stabbing people, shooting at people, using pepper spray on people, uh, running people over with your car to get these, sho these shoes is back. All right, well, let's see. What have I got? What have I got? What have I got? Don't want to do that. Oh, here we go. Uh... This is another topic I've talked about before, not this specific case, but um, a man was convicted last year of killing three Dutch civilians while he was part of the Nazi SS hit squads during World War II. Uh, he's been taken to prison to start his life sentence. Um, let's see, his, his name, Heinrich Boer, uh, well, was taken by uh, an ambulance uh, to the detention facility. And the reason he was taken by ambulance is because the man is fucking 90. A life sentence? What if they just give him a weak sentence? He'll be dead by then. It just... Okay, I know. Nobody's above the law. Nobody should be above punishment. But what are you seriously doing to this guy that's really going to affect him? I was like, oh, I can't watch Matlock. <laughs> Real quick there. Uh, Michael Douglas's son, Cameron Douglas... Uh, going to spend more time in jail. Uh, he was originally jailed for five years for uh, dealing uh, meth out of a fancy hotel in New York, and then got another four and a half years for f dealing drugs while in jail. Way to set the bar high. <laughs> uh, <laughs> though I got to tell you, you got to be careful if you're going to be committing crime, especially right here in L.A. Uh, all right, there was a report of about 1,500 wrongful uh, incarcerations uh, in the LA County, just in the last five years. Uh, it's like, that's like almost like one a day, you know. Uh, where where somebody would be uh, in prison, there was one case that I read about where the guy was incarcerated, uh, put it, thrown in jail for a couple of weeks, uh, could have been as many as six, and then 10 years, and he was incarcerated now, for, because they thought he was somebody else with a similar name, and uh, he, this person had a warrant out on him. But they arrested this guy instead, thought it was him, turns out it wasn't him, they let him go. Ten years later, the cops did it again. <laughs> they found the exact same guy, arrested him on the exact same warrant, and sent him back to jail. Uh, let's see. Moving along, moving along, moving along. I'm feeling that rather verbose tonight. I want to be able to get some of this stuff because I've it's something I want to talk about. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. See, did I talk about Barack Obama one? Yes, I did. I'm not gonna get. I already talked about that. Talked about that. Uh, let's see. Well, here's one for you. Really, this one's really quick, actually. It sounds like it should be long, but it's not. Uh, let's see. Um, 
head of the Supreme Court here in uh, California has decided the death penalty doesn't work and wants to get rid of it. See, on this one, I've always disagreed with people that say the death penalty doesn't work because it doesn't uh, prevent crime. It prevents that guy from preventing crime. That one specific guy that you execute, he's not going to commit any more crime. He can't. He's dead. Uh, but they're saying that it doesn't uh, prevent other people. It doesn't inspire people to say, oh, wait a minute, I can't do this. I'll get the death penalty. Well, as I've said many times before, the death penalty, like I said, does work, A, because it prevents that specific individual from committing crime. And I do believe that certain crimes, you know, are too heinous to be forgiven, uh, too heinous for jail. And we don't need these assholes anyway. Um, of course, that kind of blows in the face of my one of the last stories I read, you know, about people that get arrested for the wrong reason. And that's usually the biggest argument people have for why you can't have the death penalty. Um, the truth of the matter is most people that commit murder are not likely to do it again because murder usually uh, is an act of passion, an act in the moment. You know, you were so pissed off or maybe it was manslaughter, you were in a fight, you know. Um, most murderers don't murder again, uh, whether or not they're let out of jail. And uh, the truth of the matter is the death penalty, um, the only reason I don't support it all the way is because it's too expensive. It really is. If you're on death row, you you have your own private cell. You know, meals are done separately for you. Um, and it costs about a, about a good 50% more to keep a death row inmate in death row than it does uh, a regular inmate. Death row is, you know, really pretty much ruining the budgets in most prisons. Uh, my recommendation is... Uh, get rid of the death penalty, get all these assholes out of death row, put them in with a regular population, there'll be just more people for each other to kill, and, uh, you know, save the money. You know, either that or when somebody gets convicted, they get the death penalty, boom, tomorrow. <laughs> no, no appeals, no, you know, we're going to take us to another court, no, 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 it's like, ah, uh, well, too bad for you, Biff, bye. Ah. <laughs> uh. That, did that, did that. Oh, I actually burned through a lot more of these than I thought I did. All right, we did the geezer bandit. We did the poor guy that got shot. Poor house that, that got turned, went to fire. Poor bastards in the house in Texas. I don't know if I did this one, but uh, for me, once again, France is doing it again. Love France. Um... Uh, if, if I did do this before, my apologies. Like I said, I'm just burning through these. I'm getting rid of these. Um, according to uh, those lovely people in France, the, according to reporting from Paris, Kim Wilshire, about 30,000 French women uh, got prostheses that may be defective, the government says, breast implants. Um, they are recommending that these women uh, go to their doctors, get them checked out, and most likely get them removed. Um... If you happen to have gotten the breast implants because of the need for a reconstructive surgery, uh, the government will pay for the removal. If you just got them for cosmetic reasons, go fuck yourself. That was a horrible French accent, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the implants manufactured by the French company uh, Poly Implants Pre Prosthesis, or PIP, uh, say that uh, they, the problem with the implants is that they contained non-medical industrial silicone as, as opposed to the medical silicone which should be put in there. Uh, they're afraid that they might leak and because they're non-medical could cause cancer. Uh, that's an estimated, let's uh, see, that's 30,000 French ladies, about another uh, 10 or 20, about another uh, 40,000 worldwide and uh, about 2,200 of these women are already suing. Good for them. Uh, good news, population growth is down here in the U.S. Uh, the U.S. population grew up by only 2.8 million since 2010. So that's, what, what 1.4 million a year. That's good. When you consider that we live in a country of 311 million people, that's awesome. Um, I, don't, I don't see why... Uh, anybody's in such a hurry to have more children, um, especially since there really isn't much to go around. I mean, 
Where are they going to get a job? Mexico? Okay, we did that. Okay. Da, da. I think I already told you about the rash of tuba thefts here in Los Angeles. Uh, I know. Where have the kids gone wrong? Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I did, you know, but apparently, uh, Banda, which is, of course, Spanish band, uh, is becoming very, very popular for performing at parties, and so now kids are, they're not stealing cars anymore, they're not stealing sneakers or jackets, they're stealing tubas, which on average range between two and five thousand dollars. Just don't know how they're moving in without anybody seeing them. And, uh, no, I did that one and it was kind of boring, actually. Uh, let's see. And, uh, of course, you all know that Kobe Bryant's getting divorced. Um, aside from the whole spousal support, child support, splitting of uh, the assets, houses, cars, vacation homes, what have you, uh, legal experts say that Vanessa Bryant will also get at least another $75 million in additional support. That support was found to be for her bra. Uh, I don't... Uh, I have always thought this is really unfair because she's never dunked a ball in her life. Um, I feel bad for Kobe. I mean, I'm sure he's not going to go begging, but uh, no. Uh, the one thing, though, that is up to contention is the 8-carat purple diamond ring that he bought for her way back in 2003. Because according to uh, California law, you can't give somebody a gift that expensive. Uh, it's a, it's a four million dollar value. Uh, you can't give somebody that a gift that expensive without it being in writing. So li literally, it's like, hey baby, here's a diamond ring. Could you sign this for me? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's a story I definitely want to do, just not today. Oh, more about the French. God, I love the French. Uh, let's see. French step on genocide of Armenians, Riles, Turks. I know, why would I say that? But, apparently, despite threats by Turkey and vocal opposition at home, French lawmakers approved the bill Thursday, making it illegal to publicly deny that the Armenian genocide occurred. And, of course, the French are pissed because, well, they did it. Um... And, 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 and we're not talking about just, say, the news, history books, uh, you know, a speech. You know, a private citizen is against the law for a private citizen, like uh, me and Raitai talking. It's against the law for me to turn to him and say, Turks didn't do that. I mean, there was no genocide of the Armenians. That didn't happen. That's against the law now. You can go to jail. You can get a fine for that, you know. Uh, it's uh, right up there with saying, I'm going to kill the president in this country. Don't do that. <laughs> the right person hears you, they call somebody else, and you're in jail being asked, why do you want to kill the president, and why don't you believe that the Turks ki killed Armenians? <laughs> so, yeah, it seems like France is getting more and more conservative with how they believe French people should be, how they should behave. It sounds just a little too strict. Uh, where basically you're, you know, you're living in a country where you're not allowed to protest anything. Um, you're not allowed to, you know, express yourself. You know, I mean, can you, I wonder, can you still say, I think it didn't happen? Or, or does it have to be, or does it, or is it just everything? You can't say it didn't happen in any sense. Like, I know it didn't happen, or you can't say, I think it didn't happen. I don't know. Uh, keep that one for now. Uh, uh, you guys remember this, um, some time ago, some weeks ago, um, Iran got uh, possession of a, of a stealth spy drone, uh, let's see, uh, an, an RQ-170 Sentinel drone, um, uh, it fell into the, uh, ha Iranian hands and U.S. aircraft, though, uh, according, to, according to the, the Iranians, uh, they shot it down. Uh, according to us, eh, it probably just a malfunction. Well, of course, we're never going to admit that. Yeah, well, you saw it. But you can't. It's a stealth. You can't do that. Um, 
The Obama administration is, has sent a formal diplomatic request asking Iran to return the radar evading drone aircraft that crashed on CIA uh, spying mission this month. But uh, they don't expect Iran to comply. <laughs> what a shock! <laughs> Now, this embarrassing thing for me is here. I don't know what's happened since then. There's just an old bit here that I want to get out. Uh, for all I know, maybe they did return it. Doubt it. Um, as, a, <laughs> as some U.S. officials have said, I don't expect that will happen. <laughs> but I think it's important to make the request. Now, I know that there are maritime laws in effect, international maritime laws, that say that... Uh, if you happen to be in the ocean somewhere and you find a military uh, vessel, you know, whether it be sunk at the bottom of the ocean or you find it adrift, uh, if the country that owns that military vessel asks for it back, the agreement is that we give it, that you give it back, all right? Because, mostly because um, they don't want you, uh, you know, learning our technology. Um, and I'm quite sure that's exactly why, uh, you know, we want this drone back. But here's the thing. What incentive is there for Iran to give it back exactly? Uh, here you were spying on my country, and you want me to give you back the tool that you were using to spy on me with. I think big words, I think the words, fuck you. I don't know what it is in Iranian, but I'm pretty sure it was said quite a few times. Uh, I... Honestly, I I don't blame the Iranians for not wanting to give it back. I mean, you know what? If, if the spy plane was found by one of our allies, then they go, well, sure, of course you can give it back. We're pals. But here you are, you know, spying on my country, you know, finding ways to look for weaknesses in my country so you can maybe start a war, maybe come in and uh, start your own little jihad against us, find weaknesses in what's going on, and you want me to just give it back. I gotta tell you, I I would have to go with uh, with Iran on this one. I mean, not that I want Iran to win, not that I don't want us, you know, not that I want us to win, obviously, no matter what we do. But I I don't see any incentive for them to give it back at all. <laughs> and 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 they'd be dumb if they did. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, now. U.S. officials, I thought I was done with this, but apparently not. U.S. officials said they don't believe Iran scientists can reverse engineer the craft's stealth design and skin coating, which helps it evade radar. Um, but they expressed concern that Iran may figure out the drone's flight path, thus learn the CIA's surveillance targets inside of Iran. And they thought they were going to give it back? <laughs> uh... And U.S. officials are also concerned that the Iran could offer the drone to China or other U.S. rivals uh, who do have the technology to reverse engineer the technology and uh, the super coating on the plane. Plan. Well, you know what? There it is. Uh, da, da. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Let's see. All right. That's another France story. I'm done with that. Um, all right, here's some, one you know, probably. It's old, but I'm going to go with it. Um, in God, we still trust. Uh, uh, with overwhelming bipartisan support, the Republican-led chamber voted to reaffirm in God we trust as the official U.S. motto and encourage its dis display on all public schools and buildings, and let's not forget cold hard cash. Uh, as usual, I, I still oppose this. One, as an atheist, and two, as somebody that thinks that religion and government should be separate. And uh, I don't know what money has to do with God or what school buildings have to do with God, just as I don't see what doing the Pledge of Allegiance has anything to do with uh, schools. And I don't see what, uh, hell, I don't see what uh, under God has to do with a Pledge of Allegiance. If I'm pledging allegiance to my country, why do I have to bring God into it? Which, by the way, you know, uh, wasn't originally there. So, take the bullshit. Uh, all right. Good news for all you guys out there that uh, love to gamble. Uh, 
you may you may soon be able to buy lottery tickets online. Uh, right here in uh, California, state officials are exploring the idea after the U.S. rules that uh, it won't be illegal. That's it. Let's make sure all those shut-ins with gambling problems have access to giving away their money. Okay, opening doors to Hollywood. Inclusion Films teaches developmentally disabled adults all aspects of filmmaking. So they're teaching filmmaking to retards. I would love to see the first film they come up with. No, Corky, you're looking the wrong way again. That's right, I made fun of retards. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> oh, God. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see here. What else do we got here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with that, done with that. Actually, we're almost done in general. In that case, actually... Oh, so much more to go through. All right. Uh, you know what? How about I do a How about I do a quick advice column? Haven't done one of those in a little bit. Let's see. Uh, did that one. All right. Okay. Uh, dear Playboy, this may be a dumb question, but you can Can you get an STD from masturbating? I think we can put that up in the top 10 of the dumbest questions ever asked. And I'm not even going to bother to answer it because it's stupid. Okay. May have done this one before, but it was a fun one. Uh, dear Playboy, my wife asked me to name something on my bucket list. I said I'd like to take a cruise. Nice. Uh, she said she wanted a gangbang. <laughs> uh, uh, huh. Hmm. Hmm. I had never been concerned about her cheating before, but now I'm not so sure. Is it uh, normal for a woman to want a gangbang? I, I don't know. I like to think that just about every woman has at some point or another fantasized about a gangbang. I don't think all women actually want a gangbang. Like if you gave her the perfect situation, it's like, hey, these are some of the best looking guys on the planet perfect dick size for you or the way you like it and they're all trained to pleasure you the way you like it even then I don't think most women would actually go for it you know they would want to do it uh, I think most women have thought about it you know they they've they, you know they've had a little fantasy maybe a little put a little tickle in the nickel one night or here, here and there but uh, I don't think most women want a gangbang I think they've thought about it and I think that's an honest response. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, did that one. Oh, wow, I'm just burning through, baby. Okay. Did that one as well. Okay. All right. I am I'm almost uh, through my entire file here, actually. Uh, let's see. No. Let's see what we got here. Um, did that. Did that. Actually, you know what? How about... We, we just, how about we just put the, put, the, put the file away? Let's you and I have some me time. Uh, I'm going to continue to do the show. I'm going to continue to do this show as often as I can, preferably in video, occasionally with my girlfriend, the Russian. Uh, and I will continue to do uh, the other show I do, uh, Inappropriate Conversation, with my, pa my pal, my partner, uh, Craig the Rye Tai Mai Tai. Uh, and uh, you know what? And, you know, for both shows, I have this much to say, you know, learn to take a joke. Uh, and uh, learn to not take it so seriously. And if you do take it seriously, you know, keep it in context. Let's face facts. This is... A web radio show, you know. I mean, I, would I like it if the shows one day really caught on? Or everybody was like, "Woo!" And then what would happen? Everybody would start watching, and then everybody would start even more criticizing. They would just start to lose their fucking minds because, uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot of stuff on this show, and especially for my other show, that gets really offensive, and it's all just jokes. And I know a lot of people believe 
that some jokes shouldn't be said, that some jokes are too offensive, too ingrained in our society to be made fun of. For instance, the whole transgender thing. Um, also, everybody knows that on a, more than a few occasions, I have used the N-word. I always use it in context. Um, I never use it as something I'm saying to somebody. Uh, but, you know, if somebody said this, then I'm going to say, hey, this person said this. I'm not going to say, and then, the, I'm not going to say the quote was, and then he called with an N-word. No, he didn't. <laughs> you know, but uh, I still, you know, try to, to restrict myself as much as I can when it comes to that. Uh, you know, because I, I know it's hurtful. You know, you, you can't hurt me that way because I'm a spick. Look, spick, 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 spick. You know, and that's okay for me. You know, I don't get offended by it. But then again, Puerto Ricans, we haven't had the history in this country that uh, African Americans have. So, you know, if there's more sensitivity there, I understand that. But also remember that you don't have to watch this show at all. You can just say, fuck you, Joe the Shirt. Fuck you, Craig Rye Tie Mai Tai. Fuck off the cuff and fuck an inappropriate conversation. And that's a fact. You know, I don't need censorship. You went out of your way to find me to watch this so that you can be pissed off. Be pissed off if you want, but don't complain to me about it. <laughs> Fuck you. In any case, I'm Joe the Shirt, and I'm off the cuff.